diaconate, religious life, being a parent, in the measure that we're close to the church, our mother, who guides us and uh, leads us uh, to our true identity as God's beloved daughters and sons. So all of our readings today in some way point us to the sacrament of confirmation. In our first reading from Acts, we hear about Philip, who's filled with the Holy Spirit and he preaches boldly to the church in Samaria. And then he lays hands on the people in Samaria so that they can receive the Holy Spirit and go on to preach the good news as well. And in the Gospel, Jesus is talking all about the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth that he will send down on his apostles to be with them and to guide them. Now, the context for this Gospel is John chapter 14. Jesus is at the Last Supper. And just a few verses later, he tells the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Even though, even though he knows that these very men that he's speaking to are about to betray him, they're about to deny him, and he's about to go endure his passion and death. But Jesus is confident. He's not afraid. He knows that it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay because he has the Spirit and the Father dwelling within him. He wants the same thing for each one of us. He wants us to know that confidence and that peace always. So what does he do? He gives us his spirit. In baptism, he gave us his spirit and adopted us as his sons and daughters, writing his name on our hearts. But at the sacrament of confirmation, he engraves his name on our hearts, and then he seals us with that same spirit so that we can be strengthened to go out and live our vocations, to preach the good news. Jesus says in the gospel, the spirit will remain with you and be with you. Now, this is the reason that we have for our hope. St. Peter in the second reading says, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's within you. The reason we're hopeful is because the Spirit of Jesus dwells in each of us. Now, I remember when I was confirmed in this very church about 15 years ago, and the bishop who was confirming me had the habit of asking two of the confirmandi to come out into the aisle and answer a few questions. And so I was one of the lucky two that were called. <laughs> and I'll never forget that he called me out in the aisle, asked me, asked me a few questions, probably about the gifts of the Holy Spirit or something. But then I'll never forget the last question was, so, uh, Martin, have you ever thought about being a priest? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I couldn't lie to him. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to the bishop. I mean, I had the thought about that. But, but it was, it was a very hesitant yes that I gave him that day. And I remember feeling very insecure about that sense that I had within myself that I might be called to priesthood. And it wasn't until much later that I began to embrace this possibility for my life with joy. For me, everything changed when I went to college, and I discovered the beauty of prayer, the beauty of spending time in silence with the Lord outside of just going to Mass once a week. In the presence of the Blessed Sacrament and Adoration, I experienced a peace, a real presence that I didn't know how to put into words, but that I knew was there for me. I, I realized in this silence that I was able to have a conversation with this person. I was able to share the deepest desires of my heart, the desires for happiness and meaning in life, and I knew that that person not only hurt me, but that that person cared about those desires more than I did. That was the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, unfolding the gifts that He had given me in confirmation years before. Now, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God the Father, want that same relationship to develop for each one of you. Each one of us is called to have that deep sense of communion with the Father, 
Prayer is nothing more than making space in our hearts to listen to that voice within us, to let ourselves be led by that Holy Spirit towards the joy and the peace that God wants to give us. God wants to give each of you his peace. That's why the Holy Spirit in each of you is inviting you, inviting you to make that time in your day for some silent prayer, for some rest with him. He not only wants you to give you peace, but he wants you to give him anything that gets in the way of receiving that peace. So give him your heart. Give, give the Lord especially any insecurity or anything that you feel most uh, shameful about. Any, anything that you feel is the biggest obstacle to you having that joy, that sense of meaning and purpose in your life. Just give that to the Lord. And then you will make the prayer of the psalm your own, which we hear today. Blessed be God who has heard my prayer and who has shown me his kindness. Amen.